Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to talk about crafting on a budget. So there's a number of ways of making very, 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 very expensive chess pieces in Path of Exile using either the Fractured Harvest Crafts or using the Orb of Dominance, which used to be called the Maven's Orb, Metamods, Harvest, and the Awakener's Orb all together. You can create some staggeringly expensive chess pieces and really the sky's the limit on what you can spend on that. However, for a lot of players, that sort of crafting is totally out of reach and instead looking for options to craft something that is really good, but that will only cost you a couple of exalts. And this guide is mostly going to be focused on making things around the five to 12 exalt range with one more expensive option that might be in the 20 exalt range. Broadly speaking, you can follow this, although you're gonna to have to stop a little bit earlier in some steps if your budget is lower again. So if your budget's around two exalts, you can follow this option as well. Uh, you'll just need to stop a little bit earlier in a couple of places. And just to be clear, this video will be discussing the method in detail. I'm not going to be showcasing any examples. If people would like to see examples, definitely let me know down in the comments below and I can make a, sep a separate video on that. This won't require resources you're unlikely to find in solo self found. However, you will probably need to be less picky if you're an SSF. There's a number of resources you will want to use a very large number of if you're trying to craft a chess piece in Trade League because these items are quite cheap. In Solo Self Found, you may not have very many of them. Good example of this is Deafening Essences of Greed or Eldritch Orbs of Annulment. These are pretty cheap in Trade League and they're the sort of thing you can use a lot of without feeling bad about it. But in Solo Self Found, you won't have all that many of them. You will find them. They're not that rare that you won't have them, but you just won't have them uh, sort of jumping out of your ears or anything. So what does a seven to nine exalt chess piece that is crafted this way look like? It'll be six linked. It'll be on a good base, like a Zodiac Leather or a General's Brigadine, etc. It will have tier one or tier two life or potentially tier three life with good spell suppression. It will have the best bench craft for your build, which is often 10% of life added as extra ES, but sometimes it's five to 8% of added to each of life and mana. Sometimes it'll be something else. It'll have the Searing Exarch Eldritch 16% increased aura effect mod. Now this is about a 1 in 50 chance to get when you apply an exceptional Eldritch Ember to an item, but we're going to find a cheaper way of doing that and we'll outline that later. You'll also have a second useful Eldritch mod. This will not necessarily be particularly high tier or particularly good, but it will be something that still makes the item better and ultimately means that your item has 8 mods on it instead of 7, and 8 mods is just better than 7. This also does compete with some 3.16 era options that are still possible, like getting a six link hunter chest with tier one attack crit chance and a middling tier life roll. Now you can still make that. And the way you would do that is to source a six link hunter chest via any means. And once you've got it, apply reforge plus attacks from harvest until you are content with the other mods on the item. So there are four starting points for these sorts of crafts can start with a good base that is sourced from heist and has a heist enchant on it. You'll notice I'm using an assassin's garb here. Zodiac leather is actually a little bit better because part of assassin's garb's power is the 3% movement speed implicit that we're going to get rid of later, but it's perfectly fine to compromise a little, especially if you're getting something good like life modifiers have 6% increased effects. This will generally be very cheap in the late league does need to be I-86 and that will take out most of the items that come from Heist, Enchanted Armaments, Blueprints, but there will still be plenty of them and you will often find an item like this Hypnotic Hide for 20 odd chaos like you see here. This is a good starting point. It has the very valuable Life Modifiers have 6% increased effect mod on it and the, the much less useful but still potentially okay Attribute Modifiers have 6% increased effect. I only picked this one out as an example, it was just the first one that I saw on the trade site but there will be plenty of these available at any time late in the league. Make sure it's I-86, make sure that the base is top three for its type, so Assassin's Garb, Zodiac Leather, or Exquisite Leather is the other one that's really good, or you could take something like a General's Brigadine. So that's your first starting point. Uh, you're gonna need to six link this yourself, and late league that tends to cost about two Exalted Orbs. Your second choice is to start with an item level 86 plus six link that is on a reasonable base. Trade league, this typically costs an Exalt, in Solo Self Found, this is the most likely starting point, and you're going to start with the divination card, the Dapper Prodigy. It's very important that the item can't be influenced, as some of the later steps are going to apply Searing Exarch influence to it, and that's going to be incompatible with an item that is already influenced. Your next option that you could start with is a heist, well-rolled item that is already almost good enough to use. 
Typically they'll cost three exalts unlinked and five exalts if they're already linked, something like that. And that's something that will already have pretty good mods on it. But you'll be able to have a look at that and say, I really like the suffixes on this item. I don't like the prefixes. I'm going to start from this. This is going to be my starting point. This won't be an option in Solo Self Found. And the last option you've got is an item that dropped fractured with an, with an already reasonable locked mod on it. And ideally one that you can't get from Essences. A good example here would be a chess piece tier 2 hybrid evasion and life. If you had that as a prefix that was fractured onto an item, then that would be a really good point to start from. However, you'll be a bit more restricted here because you won't be able to get item level 86 on a base like that. Now, two very important things. Don't use harvest enchants on the item. Harvest enchants are the ones that transform quality to instead have a different effect. So instead of quality affecting defenses on the item, it will instead provide one life per two quality or something like that. These, broadly speaking, are bad in my opinion now. Uh, that's because GGG buffed def the base defenses to the moon, so evasion rating and armor on items are much more important than they used to be. And that's why I say start with a good base like an Assassin's Garb, a Zodiac Leather and the like. Uh, these are really significant. And don't use those Harvest Enchants. If you, pick, if you pick up a starting point off another player that has already applied a Harvest Enchant, remember that you can remove that Harvest Enchant by using your crafting bench. Likewise, don't lightly use heist enchants that restrict socket colouring. You can use these. Uh, this is things like heist enchants that say plus 12% to XYZ class of mod effects, but you cannot roll red sockets on this item. These things are quite painful to have on an, on an item. You will generally need to make extensive use of Verici's in research in order to make these items worthwhile at all as most builds can't function with, uh, with sockets that are that restricted. Okay, so let's talk about fixing the prefixes on the item. Sometimes you will be in a lucky situation where your prefixes are already pretty good. If that's the case, you can skip this step. But here's how you go about getting very good prefixes on an item via a few different means. Firstly, you're gonna to wanna to make the item Searing Exarch Dominant. When an item is Searing Exarch Dominant, then all of the Eldritch Currency will modify only the prefixes on it. So you can do this via a bottom tier Ember, an Eldritch Ember, and then once you've done that, you can apply Deafening Essences of Greed until you have the tier 1.5 life that comes from those essences. So call it tier 1.5, it's a little bit worse than the tier 1 mod that can only roll on item level 86 chests but it is only a little bit worse. It's three points lower at the maximum roll. So you're gonna spam these Deafening Essences of Greed with no concern about your suffixes at all until you have something specific happen. And that is that you have got a sing single second good mod on the, on the prefixes. So this could be something like tier two hybrid evasion and life. Once you've got this, you want to have an empty prefix as well. So the empty prefix is going to be something that you might need to take a risky Eldritch and Null to try and hit. But once you've got this, uh, once you've got this empty prefix, you then want to craft in the, a good prefix on the item. This could be something like Gravisius's 10% of life added as extra energy shield. That's generally the best of the prefixes, although your build may be different. And you can also scour the item, then apply alteration orbs, spamming it for tier one life and then Regal and then Eldritch Exalt and Annul here until you're into this position as well. So there's a couple of different ways that you can get set up, but your key goal is you want to get one exceptionally good prefix, which is tier one life or, or Deafening Essence of Greed life. And then you want to get a second okay one with nothing else on the item. Once you're there, you then benchcraft in the third mod. What you're then going to do is now recognize that you've got three prefixes on your item that you're really happy with. Now it's time to work on the suffixes. At this point, you're going to use Eldritch Chaos Orbs, Eldritch Exalts, and maybe Annulls. So firstly, you need to make the Eater of Worlds dominant on the item so that your Eldritch Currency now modifies only the suffixes. This is done by just applying a Tier 2 Icor to the item. So now it'll have a bottom tier Searing Exarch mod and a second bottom tier Eater of Worlds mod on it, which means that the Eater of Worlds is dominant. Now at this point, whenever it has at least one awful suffix on it, you want to apply either Eldritch Chaos Orbs or Eldritch Annulls. Uh, you want to use Eldritch Annulls if it has a good mod and a bad mod, Eldritch Chaos if it only has bad mods in its suffixes. 
If the item has a non-zero dexterity requirement, spell suppression is the best possible suffix you can roll. It's about 120% more likely to roll this on pure dexterity chess than it is on hybrid chess, and spell suppression has double mod weighting on pure dex chess, and additionally there are fewer total mods in the pool on those chess. Even the bottom tier spell suppression roll is good, and is probably better to have than a top tier cold resistance mod, for example. Now, Eldritch Exalts are 1 in 40 to hit tier 3 or better spell suppression on a hybrid dexterity base, and they're about 1 in 19 on pure dexterity. So that should give you a bit of a sense as to what the numbers are like, and if you're pickier and you want to go for tier 2 suppression, then you're looking 1 in 60 on hybrid, 1 in 30 on pure dex, and if you are looking for tier 1 only, 1 in 120 on a hybrid chest, and about 1 in 57 on a pure dexterity chest. Your goal here is to use these Eldritch Chaos Orbs and Annulls and Exalts to get Tier 2 Suppression, Tier 3 Cold Resist, and one bad mod, or something along those lines. Or if your dexterity requirement is 0 on the item, then you can't roll Spell Suppression at all, and in that case you want to get 2 good resistances. But ultimately, I think at the, in the current state of the game, you probably want to have chess pieces that have a dexterity requirement on almost every build. Now, there's an alternative approach. Instead of going for fixing up your prefixes first and then your suffixes, you can do something different. You can start with the uh, suffixes. This is for dexterity bases only, and this is how you would get tier 1 chaos resistance and tier 1 or 2 spell suppression together on your suffixes. I only recommend this on pure dexterity bases as it's going to be very expensive on hybrids and impossible on items that don't have a dexterity requirement. Step one, apply Deafening Essences of Envy until you've got at least tier two spell suppression. So Deafening Essences of Envy will always force one mod on the item and that will be tier one chaos resistance. This is gonna average cost you 29 essences to get tier two or better and 50% of the time you'll get tier two, 50% you'll get tier one. So this will give you a situation where you've got tier 1 chaos resistance and tier 1 or 2 spell suppression as suffixes. At this point, fill your suffixes if needed using an Eldritch Exalt rather than using the crafting bench. Step 3, you're going to make the Exarch dominant and then you are going to use Eldritch Chaos or Eldritch Annulls and Exalts until you have tier 1 life. On average, this is going to cost you about 30 Eldritch Chaos Orbs. If you'll settle for tier 2 life instead, the cost to hit is going to be halved. And once you've done that, benchcraft either 10% life as AS or 5-8% to life and mana, and then Eldritch Exalt to fill in all other mod slots and you're good to go. Very expensive alternative here that is definitely not solo self found friendly, but I will just cover this one because I think it's one of the best options you can do if you're willing to spend more like 15 Exalts, 15-18 Exalts. If you're able, you want to start with a Heist Enchanted Chest that has the special mod on it, plus one to the maximum number of bench crafts on this item. This is the Heist Multi-Mod, not the Multi-Mod that you get from the crafting bench normally. This is the one that is a Heist Enchant. This is very rare and is not something you will ever find in Solo Self Found, but in trade-enabled softcore, you will be able to find this. The time that I'm recording this video, there's only two of these chest pieces under 10 exalts, that are item level 86, so they're definitely not common. You can compromise on the base type a bit here. So firstly, you want to make the item Exarch Dominant. Secondly, you want to apply Deafening Essences of Horror repeatedly. What you're looking for here is a Deafening Essence of Horror plus Tier 1 Life plus an empty slot that you can put the Gravisius Benchcraft or something else. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Deafening Essences of Horror will provide 15% of physical damage that your player suffers is changed to cold damage, which is a powerful defensive layer because you probably have more resistance to cold than you do physical damage mitigation. So apply those Deafening Essences of Horror. If at any point the 15% of physical damage taken as cold mod is lost, then you want to just apply a new Deafening Essence of Horror. If you've got three prefixes, one of them tier one life, one of them the horror mod, and one of them the unwanted mod, an unwanted mod, use an Eldritch Null and hope. You've got a one in three chance of winning. If you've got tier one life and the horror mod as your only prefixes, then bench 10% of life as AS and move to suffixes. You have won this part of the of the craft. If tier one life is not present, Eldritch Null until only the horror prefix remains, uh, obviously returning to a new deafening essence of horror if you fail at this point. And then Eldritch Exalt chasing tier 1 life. 
a rough cost estimate, I'm not really certain that the, this estimate is correct, about 25 each of Horror Essence, Eldritch Anul, and Eldritch Exalt, just to get your prefixes. And then once you've done that, you still need to work on your suffixes afterwards. That said, you're looking at something pretty impressive, especially if you were able to get that heist multi-mod on there, uh, because that means that you'll be able to have a suffix that is also a benchcraft as well. Next, you want to get your Searing Exarch Implicit right. And for vast majority of builds at the moment, X% percent increased effect of non-cursed auras from your skills is the best mod. Now, this is at a lower tier than the comparable Redeemer mod, but it is taking up an implicit slot on your item rather than an explicit slot. And so that means that it is much easier to get this in conjunction with other good mods than it is to get the Redeemer influence mod that does the same thing better. We're going to focus on getting exceptional tier here, which is 15 to 16% for that mod. Although if you are willing to brave RNG, you can try to single or even double elevate this. So single elevated will be 17 to 18%, double elevated is 19 to 20%. That's going to cost you more and it's up to you whether it's worth it or not. So you want to start by spamming second bottom tier embers. Eventually you will hit 11 to 12% aura effect. This will cost on average 50, 49 and a half to 50 uh, greater Eldritch embers, which at the time I'm recording this video is 100 C. Now, if you are in solo self found, you'll probably need to go bottom tier instead because you will have bottom tier embers going like crazy. You'll have heaps of them, but second bottom tier ones will be a little bit rarer. So use all your second bottom tier ones as well. But if you don't get it, then just start using your bottom tier ones. If you're on a very low budget, you stop here and jump over to the next part where we're talking about the of worlds implicit. But if you've got a slightly higher budget, once you've done this, you'll have your second bottom tier aura effect mod. You want to apply exceptional icons to the item until you hit a not terrible eater mod. Now, you don't need to go for a good one. It just needs to be something that someone might want. Once you've done this, you want to apply an orbs of conflict repeatedly. Orbs of conflict only drop from the maven, but they are pretty cheap in trade league, like four for an exalt or something like that. You want to keep applying orbs of conflict until one or two things happen. Either you hit the double elevated version of the Eater mod and lose your Ember mod entirely. If this happens, you want to sell the item and start over. You've got something that's really, really special there, but it's not what you wanted. So someone else will want that and you sell the item, you start over. This is the reason that you use an okay mod. You don't want something that's absolutely terrible. The much more likely outcome though, is that the, uh, you hit the point where you've got the exceptional tier on the Exarch mod. Uh, this is much more likely than double elevating the Eater mod. The average cost of everything that we've discussed here is about 60 Greater Eldritch Embers, 5 Orbs of Conflict, and about 2 uh, Exceptional Icors. And that should be about 2 and a quarter, 2 and a half Exalts. And it's far cheaper than applying the uh, Exceptional Embers over and over until you've applied 50 of them to hit the Aura Effect mod. That's a very expensive way of doing this. Next, we're going to talk the Eater of Worlds Implicit. This is a super straightforward approach. All I suggest you do here is you apply grand or exceptional icons until you are content with the second implicit. You're not going for anything exceptional or extraordinary here. You're just going for something that is good enough to use, something that makes your build better to have it. This is just a budget chest, not some, not some premium super end game chest, but do roll over things that offer absolutely nothing to your build. Or you can apply greater icons instead until you get the perfect implicit. This is the thing to do if you need a few more points of spell block, if you need a few more points of elemental resistances or something like that. You have a higher budget option as well, which is to spam grand icons until you hit the perfect one. Most of the various options that you can get with grand icons are about one in 50 to hit the, right, uh, the mod that you want. So that's going to cost you a few exalts, like typically two to three exalts, but you could get unlucky and need to take five or six. Once you have got two mods you're happy with, so you've got your aura effect mod from the previous page and you've got the Eater of Worlds mod, you want to apply Blessed Orbs until both mods are perfectly rolled. And that's really it. If people have got questions about this method, let me know. I'm intending to do some streaming of crafting via this method. So let me know if there's anything in particular you would like to see, like do you want to see more of the chaos resistance spell suppression side of things? Do you want to see more of the super budget tier one life? Let me know what you're interested in seeing there. Otherwise, uh, may your Valorbs have interesting results. Uh, don't use them on chess pieces crafted this way because you will lose one of your good implicits when you do so. And I will see you around.